Hi, I'm Josh with Woodland Mills, and this is our full-length product video about the RS30 Pro blade sharpener. A lot of sawmill owners consider buying a blade sharpener for three main reasons. The first reason is going to be extending the life of the blade you own. With the average resharpening of five times on a blade, you can take a 10 pack of blades, put them through the sharpener and get 50 fresh starts on those same blades. The next reason is going to be convenience. So knowing that you have sharp blades when you need them and where you need them to get the job done. And then the third reason, which is possible with the RS30 Pro and its under seven minute cycle time is offering a sharpening service for hire within your community to see a further return on owning the blade sharpener. In these full length videos, we like to cover everything from the box size, weight, and dimensions. We're gonna to touch on the assembly process. Then we're gonna get into an in-depth product walk around and show you the features that make the RS30 Pro unique. Then we'll get a blade on it and we'll show you how to put the RS30 Pro to work. I'll start with the box that it's shipped in. So at 22 inches in length, 11 inches in depth, and eight inches in height, and a shipping weight of just under 40 pounds. The RS30 Pro can be shipped by courier right to your door, or if you're purchasing it with a sawmill, it can be added to the sawmill crate and packaging and included with the freight of the sawmill. Opening that box, you're gonna find our owner's manual, and in that is gonna be a step-by-step -step assembly process you're gonna follow. It's gonna take between an hour and two hours to get the sharpener out of the box and fully assembled, ready for fine tuning, just like we see it here. We went with a 12 volt power source to maximize its portability so it can be used in both field and forest and make it the most convenient for you so you can take it where you need it. To complement its portability, we've included a four legged stand that's cross braced for rigidity, made in galvanized metal to get it up to a nice working height. Alternatively, if you want to bench mount it, we do have a location here that will allow you to secure it to a bench and leave the legs off. On my left and right, you're going to see the outrigging arms with the blade supports. So we have three bearings at each point, and these are adjustable in height to hold the blade precisely where you want it. And then we also have multiple locations to make the arms longer or shorter to accommodate different blade lengths. As we follow the blade around, it'll bring us to the infeed arm, and you'll see we have an additional bearing on here, which aligns that blade and brings us into our blade backrest. The blade will then carry across and be tensioned by our guide plate to be held firmly, but still allow the blade to pass through while it's being sharpened. For blade advancement, we have a toggle switch, which is gonna start the advancing arm in motion. The advancing arm is gonna be placed on the tooth that's about to be sharpened, and then we're gonna use the fine tuning to make sure that tooth is placed exactly where we want it relative to the grinding disc. Now I wanna lower the grinding head into a cutting position and show you how we use the depth adjustment to fine tune just how deep that cutting disc goes into the gullet as it follows the profile of the blade. This depth adjustment rides on a bearing that's linked to the cam. And this is where we include three additional cam profiles so that you can better match the cam profile to the blade's gullet profile so that you're taking off the least amount of material possible while still getting your job done. Now I wanna look closer at the control panel. So we'll see we also have a toggle switch here that's gonna turn on the grinding disc. We have a power on which is gonna turn on a red light here on the side of the box. We also have a power off button. And then I wanna highlight that we have a low and high speed feature on the RS30 Pro. We realized when designing the RS30, the high speed was great for getting the blade sharpened, but it also made it challenging for that initial fine tuning and precision adjustment that's required when you first put the blade on. So by clicking into the low speed, you can really dial in those first adjustments, get the blade running smoothly, and then flick it over to high to get the job done. We've chosen to use a CBN grinding wheel over a traditional bonded abrasive disc. We've done this for the longevity 
the consistency because it holds its profile over its service life, and also its resistance to heat and its ability to dissipate the heat that's generated. As part of the initial setup, when you first get a blade on, you're gonna be able to set the grinding head to match the hook angle of the blade, and we have seven, 10, and 14 degree options. Now I wanna put a blade on the sharpener and really show you how to use the adjustments and controls to dial it in and get that blade sharpened. So we're gonna come to the front of the sharpener. We're gonna get the blade aligned in the guides. I come along the guide. Washer, make sure it's in front of the guide bearing and then slide it behind the tension plate. And again, we're gonna tune this in so it allows the blade to advance, but holds it firmly when it's being ground. Now I'm gonna dry run the blade in low speed. To make sure I'm not overloading the drive motor with too much tension. With the blade installed, I can now tighten up the guide plate and that's gonna hold the blade against the blade backrest, applying pressure to keep it in place during the grinding process. You'll know you've got the right amount of tension when the blade still passes through freely with the advancer, but stays in place during the grinding process. You'll see when I installed the blade that it fit nicely into the blade support guides. That's because I had pre-adjusted those blade support arms to suit the diameter of the blade that I was putting on the sharpener. I've also gone ahead and changed the cam to the cam that best matches the profile of the blade I'm gonna be sharpening to minimize the amount of material I have to take off as we go through the sharpening process. The next step is to bring down the grinding head, making sure that the depth adjuster is nested properly in its seat. And then again, in our low speed, we're gonna start running the advancer and see how the grinding disc comes down to meet the profile. Now, when you're first getting set up for the first time, this can be way out of adjustment and it's gonna take a bit of time to get it close before we ever turn on the grinding disc. With this blade now advancing, and the grinding disc running up and down, you can see that we have no interaction at all. And this is a great place to start so that as we do our adjustments, we're just bringing it in to the point where it starts to touch. So the first adjustment we're gonna make is with the advancing arm and we're gonna get it so it pushes that tooth and leaves the face of the tooth right where we want it relative to the grinding disc. Now with this adjustment, we're gonna go clockwise further the gap between the face and the disc, and we're gonna go counterclockwise to close that gap. And I'm gonna adjust that now. So I turn that counterclockwise and now I've closed that gap. And now it's time to start bringing that grinding head down into the gullet. And what I'm listening for is just a little bit of interaction between the CBN wheel and the, the metal of the tooth. So for that, again, counterclockwise is gonna lower the grinding wheel down into the gullet. And we're just gonna do it in small increments, half turn. And we're gonna watch to see how that starts to follow the gullet. And again, this is all done in low speed so we can really see what's going on. So with the depth adjustment set, so I'm running just over the gullet, I'm now gonna turn on the grinding disc and start doing the real fine adjustments to just take off that little bit of material. So on the back of the blade, I'm just taking off the right amount of material, but I still need to lower it down into the cut.
So now I'm doing the back of the tooth as well as the bottom of the gullet. So with this tune now, you'll see the amount of material we're taking off. And you can also note the sound is consistent all the way through the grind. Now that I know it's sharpening well, I'm going to click it into high speed. Once the sharpening process is started, you're going to want to place the auto stop around 10 teeth behind the first tooth sharpened. And this will go around and press the two toggle switches off after the last tooth has been put through the sharpener. Now that the auto stop has turned the sharpener off, I want to do a bit of a recap. So we just sharpened a 144 inch long blade. It took under seven minutes to do it. And as you can see from the initial setup where I was matching the grinding head with the blade profile, that low speed in the adjustments made it both simple and intuitive. And then we flipped it into high speed for the job of sharpening the blade, which made that quick and efficient. I hope you've enjoyed this video about the RS30 Pro blade sharpener. For more information, please give us a call or check us out online. This has been Josh from Woodland Mills.